Good morning and welcome to Sacred Heart Parish on the 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Celebrating Mass today is Father Sheehan, assisting him is Deacon John Roberts. Look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor, once forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We'd like to welcome you all who are following the celebration live streaming and uh, thank you for being with us at this Sunday Mass here at Sacred Heart Church in Coronado. Uh, the Gospel today is about Jesus walking in the water and calming the sea. Uh, we shouldn't turn to God just when we're in trouble but at all times, so we turn to our Lord at this time and ask him for his compassion, mercy, and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts, the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have prepared. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness, kindness and, and grant, grant us, us your, your salvation. salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. 
Lord, Lord let, let us see your, your kindness, kindness and, and grant, grant us your, your salvation. salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, Lord let, let us see your kindness, kindness and grant us your salvation. salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us, let us see your, your kindness, kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John, the Lord, in your heart and your lips, I properly proclaim the good news of salvation. Honor, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for his word. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went, on, went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ.
on a church sign back in the Midwest. Uh, some tourists were passing by and they uh, stopped to check the services for the weekend. 10 o'clock in the morning, it said, Jesus walking on the water. And 5 p.m., searching for Jesus. Did you get it? <laughs> water is a sign of life. It's also a sign of death. Uh, nothing lives without water. Water is so important, but it's also a sign of death. It destroys, it snuffs out life and people, etc., etc. I say that words, those words too often. But anyhow, in baptism, uh, we can enter into the death and resurrection of Christ through water, dying with Jesus, uh, mysteriously, so to speak, down into the grave and up to resurrection, dying and rising, death, resurrection. But uh, we kind of look at the scriptures and see a little more about water. In the book of Genesis, there's a beautiful passage in there and it says, the earth was formless and void and darkness were over the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God, in a sense, was waiting to bring order and calm out of chaos. I like that word, hovering, hovering. It's like um, somebody waiting patiently uh, to help and to reach out. But the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, so to speak, to bring peace and calm out of chaos. We know the story of the Exodus across the Red Sea, the water. Moses touched it and it divided, and the Israelites went across on dry, dry sod. And then the um, Egyptians came along following them, trying to uh, annihilate them, and the water came back right on top of them and swallowed them. And it was total death and destruction. So we have these uh, examples about water and many more in the scriptures. And today we have water again in the gospel story. The, the uh, Sea of Galilee. The background to the story is Jesus had fed the 5,000 and he uh, encouraged the disciples to go into the boat and they were go when going across the sea to Capernaum. And Jesus went up the mountain to pray, to be with his father. And he did that quite frequently. He was in communion with his father at all times. And then about the middle of the night, when it was very, very dark, a storm came up on the lake and the boat was tossed to and fro. And um, a boat always in the scriptures is a symbol of the church. It's one of the oldest symbols of the church, the bark of Peter, the boat. And uh, in the boat, of course, was uh, Peter, uh, the head, and then the other apostles. The church was represented in the boat. And the turbulent waters is a symbol of sin and chaos and division and uh, scandals, wars, uh, sickness, pandemics, everything that happens in the world, in the church and in the world. And there are a lot of things happening. And that's uh, symbolized by the churning, the churning of the waves and then Jesus appeared walking in the water. And they saw him. They thought it was a ghost. 
And Peter, as he came a little closer, Peter said, bid me, Lord, to walk on the water to you. And then Peter got out of the boat, and he did okay for a while. I saw a video of, of that little passage in scripture, and he did well. He was looking at Jesus. He did well, but then his mind went off. He got scared, and of course he sank into the water. And Jesus caught him and said, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? He already told him, it, it is I, do not be afraid. And then they went back into the boat and Jesus with them. And then there was a great calm, a great sense of peace in the uh, lake. How does this apply to today's world? We all know that there's a lot of uh, turmoil in the world today and a lot of confusion and a lot of uh, uh, wars and uh, disturbances and unrest and um, uh, fighting for civil rights and uh, very often a civil disturbance, and in the church, of course, there's always stuff going on of one kind or another. Difficulties and divisions and uh, scandals and you name it. So the Lord who brought calm to the sea in Galilee can bring calm to our world, to our church. We need to keep our eyes focused on him. I think it was Teresa of Avila said all of our problems come from not keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. We need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. See, we have the privilege of sharing in the divine life, in God's life. Like Jesus was uh, both man and God human and divine. He exercised his divine power to show God's lordship over all creation and over material things, as he did in so many different times. And we also have the power to bring peace to the world around us. It's going to happen through people, good people, and uh, the fact that we participate in the life of Christ, we all have a responsibility to try to bring some peace and calm out of the difficulties of everyday life, being at home during the pandemic, being upset, being fearful. We need to leave these things go and keep our minds fixed on Jesus. For the church, that we will not be afraid to follow Christ wherever he calls us and always seek his saving help. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace, especially for the people in Lebanon, that God may bring healing and restoration even amidst the storms that frighten so many in our world today and bring the human family to calm and cooperation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick or sorrowing, that the Lord will be near them, whispering to their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are separated from loved ones, especially those who are ill, and members of the military, that they will find strength in Christ and take courage. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ann Patterson and Eileen Kennedy and all who have died, that they may see the kindness of the Lord and rejoice in his salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we offer from the silence of our hearts, for ourselves and those who we ask for, our, who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up these prayers and petitions and also those still unspoken to the intercession of Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It would become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of your passion and death, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. My sisters and brothers pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you're, you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim, holy holy holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, 
like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and was more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, John and Ramon, his auxiliaries, the clergy, religious, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, for the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. <clears throat> May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O oh Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'd like to, to thank you for being with us this morning on this Mass and live streaming. There will be two Masses uh, today out in the plaza, one at 9 a.m. and the other at 11 a.m. And you're encouraged 
to uh, <coughs> bring an umbrella, just in case the sun comes out early, and uh, also water. There will be a number of chairs set up there for you. And we encourage, of course, people to wear their mask and also to observe the um, distancing. Thank you, Deacon uh, John, for being with us, and also Anne for proclaiming the word. So we wish everybody a healthy and a happy day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, radiating the joy of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Thank you.